Hi, I'm Phuket. I'm the founder and managing director of UR Digital. I'm going to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper to Warringa, where we are going to talk about SEO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the journeys and insights of successful entrepreneurs and industry leaders. I'm your host, Prosper Tarawinga, and today we have a remarkable guest who has carved a path to success through digital marketing and business consulting. Join me in welcoming Paul Kitt, the founder and managing director of UR Digital, a renowned digital marketing agency based in Sydney, and they are focused on SEO. Now, Pulkit has an impressive track record of being recognized as a top 50 small business leader in 2022 and one of the top 20 Australian digital marketers to work within the same year. With over 15 years of experience in the SEO space, including multilingual expertise, Pulkit has become an authority in his speed in his field. And it's a pleasure to have him on the show. Now, Pulkit, I could go on and on, but the reason why we invited you on the show is for you to let us know all about yourself and pretty much how you got started. Tell us a little bit about your journey so far. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, Prosper, for having me. Really appreciate that. And uh, uh, well, when I hear back to what you just said, it kind of sounds like, oh my God. <laughs> but uh, how I got into digital marketing is actually a very interesting space because I'm actually qualified as a network engineer. And when I used to work as a network engineer, we had to travel to client locations, which were sometimes uh, a long commute. So I got myself into reading and reading and I, that was in the year when Google came out with its IPO. So I started reading more and more about it and then I got fascinated about it. And uh, basically self-taught and once I had acquired enough knowledge within the next couple of years then I was looking for people who would take a bet on me and I couldn't find anybody so I reached out and so the, the first culprit the, 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 the first casualties were my parents so I took over their business stuff and uh, I was able to rank them and I was like wow this is brilliant this is amazing this was back in 2005 2006 um, and has never, and I've never looked back since. I've been doing SEO since 2007, and uh, uh, here is my hope: if anything can be sold legally, I have most likely marketed it using SEO. Fantastic! And it's really remarkable how, when you didn't find anyone to take a bet on you, you went straight to your parents, and uh, obviously you got results for them. Now you've been doing SEO for quite a while, and obviously there has been so many algorithm changes, um, you know, throughout the whole uh, spectrum. Tell us how you've been able to actually stay, um, you know, aboard all these changes and still manage to win these awards and get remarkable results. Uh, I think uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. It's not too hard because what, what hasn't changed in the past 15 years is the core stuff hasn't changed. And what people try to always try to do is that they are really trying to game the system. And that's why they're trying to do the catch ups. But uh, if your foundations are really strong, uh, then those foundations haven't changed since day one uh, of when Google was launched. Obviously, there have been updates to it. And uh, all of those updates have uh, evolved into more and more learning uh, the system's gotten more complex, but the foundations have remained the same. So if you're really working on the foundations, you're setting up uh, yourself for success in the long run. So any cutting corners is not uh, going to help. Fantastic. I really like uh, that uh, response because... If you would understand, people are coming to the internet to get information. People are coming to the internet to buy something or people are coming to be to the internet to be entertained. And if you really look at those core things, I think that's where SEO really stems upon. If you can simply educate others or simply entertain others or simply empower others i think whatever happens with the algorithms or google will just happen in the background and people will definitely be 
um, you know, beating a pathway to your door, especially if you're well optimized. Now, um, Pulte, you mentioned something that is, um, you know, very funny to to everybody else, but to an SEO person, this is something that is um, crucial. You know, as a digital marketer, you've, um, you know, mentioned that you anything that can be sold legally, you have probably sold it. Now, you've likely encountered various products and services. Now, can you give us an example of a particularly challenging product or service that you successfully marketed using SEO and how did you approach it? Well, I can actually think of two of them straight up when you talk about this is one of them was an Armenian dating site. <laughs> even, um, even I, where would you start? Okay, go on. And the other one was CBD oil. Right. Right. So those two were particularly challenging because uh, there is a very fine line. When it comes to CBD oil, there is hundreds of regulations that you need to worry about. There's a very fine line of what can be said and cannot be said. Uh, those regulations are coming directly in some cases, depending on the country, they're coming directly from the government. And on top of that, there are further regulations that are superimposed by Google. So those navigating those so identification of what can be legally said or how the stuff can be legally promoted, even though it's all a very scaled down version of uh, uh, cannabis having a very low TSH volume level, but there is still, you can't market it. That's uh, in many states, it's uh, it's still considered, uh, if it is a banned product, then you really cannot go into that market. So it's identification of all of those things uh, and stay uh, that becomes very important when it comes to products uh, that are borderline uh, uh, controversial, if you would ask me. And, and the other, uh, the Armenian dating site, that is a tricky one as well because... Uh, how do you distinguish your uh, the business as a dating site as opposed to a personnel service, for example? That's a very and that's super heavy regulated industry, uh, not from a government perspective. But Google does. You want to ensure that you're really not flagged as an unsafe search because when you are a dating site, it's very uh, user generated content and uh, all of that. Uh, having control, having those controls in place. Uh, is ensuring that you're really, because once you're classified as a uh, part of a unsafe search uh, with Google, that means that's it. I mean, you know, uh, it'll take a very long time to get rid of that tagline um, and uh, make sure that you're uh, actually a legitimate business. Uh, all of those things, navigating those issues, they're super important. Those two were, but those are the kind of the ones that also uh, the usual businesses don't give you that adrenaline rush anymore. But, you know, when you encounter a challenging business like this, then, you know, navigating within those, even medical industry or legal industry, there's a lot of stuff that you cannot say. I mean, you cannot sell, uh, you cannot sell a medical service like chiropractors or stuff like those. You can't sell them because APRA does not allow you to do that. So uh, how do you promote them online, still get them the business uh, whilst following that uh, uh, boundaries of regulations that you're a part of? Absolutely. I think that's, that's the bit. That's the interesting uh, bit. Absolutely. I wish a lot of people would come across your white hat uh, sort of strategies and integrity when it comes to things like this, because like you mentioned, Google has these policies against my health, my money um, sort of um, communication. And you can't speak directly uh, to somebody's personal uh, well-being. And you seem to have managed to navigate past that, which really um, is proof positive why you've actually, um, you know, been awarded all the awards that you've had. And speaking of awards, you've been recognized as 
um, you know, one of the top 50 business leaders in um, 2022. And um, it's quite a re remarkable achievement. I mean, we had just come out of COVID and, um, you know, things were just uh, all over the place. No, what sort of key strategies um, or principles do you actually attribute to your success in leading and growing your business? Well, I only lead by there is a there's only a few things that we follow is we don't uh, we don't uh, in our business honesty is very important and uh, honesty is absolutely super critical and along with that not only that we also think about uh, we are also humans so if we make a mistake we reach out to our customers in the first place and tell them if we messed up we fix it up for you and uh, things are changing uh, on such and that is the only difference that we really have staying ahead of the game a lot of businesses have the technical skills the capabilities to do it uh, but the, the 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 stuff is uh, who is cutting the noise for you who is looking uh, cutting the noise for you and trying to tell you that okay it's it's not rocket i uh, put it this way we don't have a magic wand uh, we don't have a magic wand. If people are looking for it, we can we can we can position we can try to position you in front of them. But whether they will buy from you or not is not something we can control. <laughs> As you know, you know you could bring a horse to the river, but you can't force it to drink. And uh, obviously, with the way that you have structured your business and the way you actually help your clients, you definitely have a human first approach. And talking about human first approach, we just discovered we are part of a um, the same networking group. And for you, networking is very pivotal in the way that you running your business, because business networking has played a real significant role in shaping the course of your own business. Now, could you share with us maybe um, the story of that pivotal networking event and how it actually transformed your entrepreneurial journey? Oh, well, I'll tell you honestly, uh, and three years ago, I attended a networking event in uh, January of 21, actually two years ago, two and a half years ago, January of, uh, no, March of 21, first ever networking event I actually went to, and that changed the course of my business forever. Forever. Wow. Wow. Uh, it was run by an organization. Uh, that was funded by the government and they well funnily enough they had a webinar on the day uh, in the afternoon at 3 p.m which i attended on seo just to have a feeler of it uh, and i attended the webinar sorry the in-person networking event at 6 p.m and next day morning i got a next day afternoon i got a call from them uh, that they were looking for an uh, advisor to come on board for seo and they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. Wow. And I said, uh, yes, 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Change the course of my business forever. And they, they, that is actually how we started the consulting arm of our business. Because we never did consulting or I never did consulting before that. But that's how it got started. And I have never looked back since we it's a it is a paid service model on our uh, as a business uh, on our business fantastic and i can imagine you know moving forward if you are now offering consulting which uh, then opens you up to done for you services it really uh, broadens the scope of how you can be able to help clients and you know good good on you for taking the jump into something that has now really uh, changed your business. Now, this came via business networking. What, what other strategies or techniques have you actually found effective in expanding your outreach and maybe connecting with potential clients as well? See, for me personally, I mean, you know, uh, uh, apart from SEO, we're doing uh, quite heavily on the networking. Uh, networking is something that we're doing quite heavily on and we, because uh, one of the ways that we look at it is uh, the, 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 the customers that we're trying to reach to, we need to be closer to them to understand their problems. And networking gives us that opportunity to speak to other businesses in different industries to articulate and, or understand their problems. 
that's what really helps us uh, networking is something that we do quite heavily we, the other thing that we do is uh, industry awards uh is uh, obviously with some of the awards that we've been uh, nominated for as a finalist for Australian Small Business Champions Awards two years in a row, Local right. Business Awards two years in a row, APAC Awards three years in a row, uh, SEM Rush Awards. It actually restarted last year. So that was the last year or the first year after a long sabbatical uh, for uh, SEM Rush Awards. So oh, the industry awards gives us uh, a validation um and that is that and uh, just plain old simple seo stuff i mean you know cut through the noise and tell them what they uh, clear the air for our customers and that brings us repeat customers all the time fantastic you see all these awards and you really showing up with great customer care um you know really needs to be noted by a lot of business people who just maybe approach their business in a way of let's just do our service and uh, whatever the customer wants, we'll have to deal with that later. But would you say that maybe you're being able to connect and communicate and network is because you are multilingual and you also use this multilingual approach to your uh, SEO. And that's very impressive. Now, my question to you is what challenges and opportunities do you encounter when you're optimizing websites in different languages and how do you actually adapt your strategies accordingly? Well, see, when it comes to multilingual SEO, thank you for that question. Now, when it comes to multilingual SEO, the biggest challenge is the language. Because uh, for me personally, as a human, I cannot know, I only know a certain number of languages, not all of them. Now, when we did... Um, uh, SEO for German language SEO. Uh, our focus, to our uh, the engine that we were targeting on was obviously Google. Uh, so the core strategies remained the same. The main reason, the main advantage uh, was that we had to hire somebody who understood the dialect, who understood the language, who understood the grammar, who understood everything because all of those stuff is important because when we are publishing new content out there, we want to ensure that it is targeted to the audience that's going to consume it. So that wasn't uh, uh, the core strategies remained the same. And we basically had to uh, get an external consultant to help us out with the language itself. The technical stuff we already took care of, um, basically a translator. Then the other one that we did was uh, or doing this uh, the uh, Cantonese, Japanese, Mandarin. Uh, so that was a challenge because we had to go through the guidelines from Baidu because that was the target market that we were going after. And for uh, Japan, it was google.co.jp. So again, a Japanese, uh, a Japanese guys and then uh, 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 somebody who knew Cantonese, uh, Cantonese and Mandarin so that they can actually make us understand the regulations or the guidelines so that we can work around it and ensure that that's getting uh, that's getting uh, marketed properly because uh, again baidu is a uh, whole different we, we had never really worked on baidu before absolutely never worked on baidu before so that was a challenge i i, I honestly didn't know what i was getting myself into before I took on that project, because I didn't even, I haven't, I, I, I didn't even know about the guidelines from Baidu. But then the more I got into it, then I realized that it's ultimately uh, the core fundamentals for every search engine remains the same, be it Yandex uh, in Russia or Baidu in China or uh, be it any other search engine that exists out there. Even Bing, the core fundamentals remain the same. So as long as your fundamentals are strong, then you have no issues with it. Fantastic. That's something that is quite remarkable. I was actually thinking while you're talking, I think you should not call your company UR Digital. You should call it UN Digital, United Nations, because every <laughs> language can be <laughs> spoken in your, in your business and everything else that comes along with it. Now, the exciting thing about it is you, you are going cross uh, cultural cross, um, you know, language, but you're still using the same platform, the same framework. And I know 
Google sort of looks into the EET sort of uh, setup of uh, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness of whatever content that you're putting out there now. In your opinion there, uh, Pulkit, what are the key elements of a successful SEO campaign? And um, are there any common mistakes that businesses should actually avoid? Well, one of the things uh, uh, that a lot of businesses that are not leveraging clearly is obviously the schema markups. Because they find it too complicated uh, or, or, it, or it normally gets put out in the too hard basket or they're trying to automate the stuff. Uh, if Google has to trust your business or the business that you're trying to market, then you really need to establish that credibility in the eyes of Google. Uh, customers buy, but if you're not ranking, then you're not, uh, uh, then, then, then they're really, uh, you may be having customers, but not from that channel or the, from that online marketing medium. So uh, automation uh, in SEO, automation does not exist. And the, a, a lot of common mistakes are very basic mistakes. I mean, you know, people rely on plugins. The 40% of the internet runs on WordPress. And then uh, I get questions like, you know, my, my uh, Yoast score, content score isn't great. I mean, really, I mean, you know, if that would have been the, if really, I mean, that's, if that would have been the reason why your website isn't ranking, or if you get a hundred percent score on that, uh, that does not mean that your website is going to rank. So that's a lot of the uh, issue. The other other issue that people don't, uh, it, the other common biggest mistake in my opinion is people are trying to please Google, and uh, what I tell them is Google is not your customer. Ultimately. It is going to be a human behind a computer or on your on his his or her cell phone that is doing the search and is looking for your products and services. So if you try to, you may win Google's love, but you may actually end up uh, losing customers' love. So give them what they want. Uh, give them and people are impatient. They, you literally have five seconds, less than five seconds to sell yourself, and without even talking. That's also without even talking. So, so give them what they want. Give them what they want fast, uh, and uh, give the uh, and that's that's really that is where most people make mistakes with SEO, in my opinion. Absolutely. When you started talking about the Yoast traffic lights, I was just thinking if you're watching this right now, the only traffic lights you have to be watching are the ones you come across when you're driving to Pulkit's office because those are the only ones that that matter right now now pull it if people are interested and in, you know really value your expertise and respect the work that you've put in and actually resonate with what you're talking about today what would be the best way that people can get a hold of you oh uh, well put it this way uh is the easiest way people can get a hold of me is via sending me an email visit the website they can book in a 30 minute consulting with me at no cost to them well, that's just once for organization, but then uh, give us a call or they can send me an email. My email address is uh, pullkit at urdigital.com.au or uh, LinkedIn, easier, uh, uh, easy. That's it. And we get back to you within four hours uh, during business days, and that's guaranteed. Wow. Fantastic. I really, really uh, like that guarantee because some people never really get back to people because they obviously have no value to offer. Now, okay, between you and me, you would understand and know there's a lot of entrepreneurs, like you said, who are impatient. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who have tried and dabbled into this whole SEO space and they didn't get anything out of it but a large bill and some prescriptions from the doctor. And also maybe they would have gone all the way and they've got bandages from the burns unit where they got burned by other, um, you know, black hat actors there. Now with your extensive experience in digital marketing, what sort of advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs who just, uh, starting to build their online presence and uh, you know looking to really have um, a business that's profitable and enjoyable. 
Right. So uh, I think I have I don't have a short answer to your question. Unfortunately, the longer answer to your question is uh, this SEO is a part of a larger marketing strategy. It's just one small part of your larger marketing strategy. If you are relying really on just SEO as your o is your as your overall marketing strategy, it's and then how much time and effort are you investing in it? If you if a business thinks that they can go after a $9.99 package for six months and get some great results, that strategy is bound to fail from the get-go. That strategy is bound to fail, fail from the get-go. Uh, why an SEO campaign fails, there are hundreds of reasons for it. However, I feel one of the main reasons, in my opinion, I think I, I, I do have, I would put 50% blame on the customers and 50% blame on the agencies itself is not having uh, the right expectations from the beginning, what they can expect out of an SEO campaign. Uh, a campaign that is designed around leads is also bound to fail, in my opinion. Uh, what you really can target is increase the traffic to your website by having fresh, good quality and helpful content that helps your visitors. And that way, you will have no shortage of rankings. You will have no shortage of leads. You will not have your, that is a successful SEO campaign in my opinion. Uh, however, people, and I, I still get it. I mean, I still get it. Uh, when can I get, uh, when uh, can you guarantee, can you guarantee this? Can you guarantee this? No, we cannot guarantee you anything. Nobody can guarantee this. And uh, people think that first, first page and that's it or first rank or top three or oh, we're not doing this or we're not getting that. Then you have to have a look at everything right from uh, have a 360 degree marketing campaign because people also need a validation of their research. So they might start from Google but they need they might need validation from elsewhere as well from uh, and, and some 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 industries have a very long lead conversion uh, cycle whereas some industries have a uh, very short lead conversion cycle so depending on uh, what is the value of the product that you're really trying to sell if i'm trying to sell a 1 million dollar house it's going to take a lot of effort for me because i'll have to, because the customer will have to take a big mortgage uh, which he has to pay for the next 30 years to be able to actually uh, afford that kind of thing so uh, people don't uh, uh, understand uh, put the end customers come up with uh, and the other reason why uh, campaigns fail is customers change strategies midway that happens almost every time, almost every time. And they start with something and then they begin and they end up with something else, which happens to be a mishmash. Have a clear goal and a clear objective of where you want to be, uh, what you see your business like, a short-term goal and a long-term goal. And if you focus your strategy around that, I think you're set, uh, you, you, you are having a right foundation. The last bit that I would like to add to it is, uh, SEO or any marketing strategy, any 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 marketing medium that you do, if you're trying to do it for a short term, then it's not going to deliver you the results. If you're in it, you're in it for life, basically. And the way I put it up is the day you start your business, the marketing never stops. The reason why we go to networking events, the reason why we go to anywhere, the reason why we tell them what we do, what we do to anybody who we meet is actually a, uh, a an indirect method of networking or marketing your business so uh, i'm sorry it was a long answer but uh, that is the answer in my opinion <laughs>
Oh, absolutely. You are actually embodying the very fact that it's not just an instant press of a button and voila, it's there. So the reason why you took your time to answer this is basically to really showcase that it's not a single event, but it's a process. And the fact that, you know, science or the people that have money to study these things say it takes about 21 um, iterations or touch points for people to actually then convert into the person that's going to be your customer. And guess what? SEO might just be one of the 21 touch points. So if you're just showing up with one touch point, then where are the rest of the 20 going to come from? And you're going to be looking at Pulkit and saying, hey, where is my uh, results? And he's probably going to speak to you back in German because maybe that's the language that they're optimizing in in that week. But I really, really enjoyed that answer, Pulkit. And it's so, um, you know, proof that you really uh, have a grasp in what it is that you are doing there. And at the end of the day, some people just, you know, spray and pray with their marketing and they're not really in it for the long haul. Um, you know, they just want a quick win and then it works out like that. But at as you would notice, and obviously you are always on the pulse of what um, is happening in the marketplace there. You know, we've had so many different algorithm changes and now Google is coming up with so many different uh, iterations to the way they work. I mean, the first thing they did was give us Google Maps. And you, let me tell you what I did. I actually started looking for my home address instead of me <laughs> using that as part of my marketing strategy. Um, so there's so many things that are happening. I want you to just maybe speak on what you see, um, you know, the future of SEO being and, you know, the, the advent of technology and the new um, AI systems and processes that they're bringing to the table. What What's your feel of what that would look like? I think AI uh, is definitely here to stay, 100%. Uh, now, I I also feel that there is, and this is something that I actually heard a couple of months ago, and which uh, that was like a, a wow moment for me. And that wow moment was that uh, as we are transitioning this, like when I look at myself personally, I'm over 40, and... I still use the traditional model of search, which I've been using for the past 20 years, is going on to google.com Google and doing a search and things like those. And uh, But the new generation or the 15 or 20 year olds that are graduating to become the next set of consumers, they may not be using Google at the way that they are actually using it. So uh, Google Discover is going to play a big role uh, Android is the large, uh, the, the the most used operating system in the world, and uh, people are possibly using Google Cards to uh, find new products and services that they like. They so that is going to be a very big iteration uh, in the next one. Voice search, in my opinion, is going to be super big, uh, even though even though uh, and people are. Uh, there is a little bit of penetration when I look at it from the voice search. The share of voice search uh, is increasing steadily. And the generative AI from Google, uh, which is supposed to get released this year, uh, we literally have to wait and see how uh, the generative AI. And ultimately, what happens is that even though generative AI gets released, the point is ultimately how much adoption the user actually has to be able to give you a definite answer on that. Because if users don't like it or if users don't use it or don't adopt it, then uh, that product will basically die down. If um, And there might be some other iteration that might come in the future. Uh, but <clears throat> I feel that AI, some form of iteration with AI is going to come. And whether AI is going to be intelligent enough to tell you that when you're looking for a best or say, put it this way, cheapest iPhone, for example, then uh, instead of giving you 10 results on a page, so the generative AI tells you, okay, this is where you need to go. And that would basically kill the entire SEO industry. I can so see that happening with the advent of technology. And I really, you know, got my aha moment, um, you know, recently when 
um, you know, even kids in schools are now being sort of allowed to really venture into this whole AI space and all these other plugins that they're creating. So we can only wait and see, all right, and see how that is going to happen. But Pulkit, I want to I I wanna say something. The men I just spoke to is not the men that I've heard that he once went to a class university drunk. You know, you... <laughs> <laughs> you have really come full circle, and uh, I hear you were subsequently uh, kicked out of that class. Now, tell yeah. me something. How did that experience really shape, um, you know, your personal and professional growth, and what sort of lessons did you learn from that? Oh, well, when I look at it today, uh, I obviously have a share a good laugh when I, uh, when I think back on it. Obviously, <laughs> when I was kicked out, because I was an international student when I was kicked out of that class. Right. And it wasn't just me. We were a group of five people. Uh, and the, the thing is that, uh, that the five people that actually got kicked out, the professors knew that these guys are, uh, well, I wouldn't say intelligent, but we, we were able to get by, put it this way. So, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I had a friend come over from Turkey and he got some local stuff and we got drunk at his place. And then Unfortunately, we got we got drunk at half past five in the afternoon, and then at six p.m. we had our classes. Uh, so we went to the university, and that stuff was strong. So we obviously it was very visible that we were not uh, in our senses, and we got kicked off. And we got a warning from the university, but well, then what we actually did was we were trying to test our limits. Okay, what what limits can we? really look drunk and then we were just trying to scale it down one level every time so that okay we can still drink and then go to the university but not look drunk <laughs> but yeah the 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 the, the, the lesson uh, uh, or the learnings from that stuff is that uh, one mistake can actually ruin your career uh, big time so never do it um, there is a very fine line between uh, there is a very fine line between uh, which which shouldn't be crossed basically, but obviously people do silly things when they're really young, and I did that when I was really young. <laughs> Fantastic! Well, thank you so much for sharing that story with us, and uh, that really concludes our episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I really appreciate you for sharing your incredible journey and your insights especially about seo today there pull kit no thank you thank you prosper for having me and uh yes i really enjoyed the experience fantastic well basically your expertise in seo and digital marketing is truly remarkable so it made it really really easy and it's clear that you actually have had a profound impact on the business um, and the industry and through your work with you are digital i can't wait to see what you guys are going to be creating in the future we really wish you continued success in all your uh endeavors moving forward and um you know to our viewers who are watching right now thank you so much for tuning in to the online prosperity show and remember to stay inspired and keep striving for prosperity until next time i'm prosper taringa signing off uh, bye for now